Hey there, this is Wake Angel 2001 getting some in front of the camera time once again. And um, this is, this is a kind of a delayed video. I was wondering how I was going to make it, so that, you know. But uh, I, did ch I did chime in on my DeviantArt gallery as soon as I heard about it. Like, um, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie has had, it's, has officially announced that they are making the sequel. So, yay! I... That was kind of obvious, given how they like to franchise things these days, and Sonic actually did quite well. <laughs> I'm actually surprised that they... Wait, have they announced a Detective Pikachu 2 movie, or another live-action Pokemon movie of any kind? I'm not, I'm not sure about that one. But we are getting a Sonic 2, and that's what's important, because that's the thing that I really follow a lot. Okay, so... <laughs> Sonic... Sonic 2, the movie. Um... Well, I figured since um, since they announced it, I would use my considerable knowledge of Sonic lore and canon to speculate as to what they might do in a sequel. And um, rather than just sit here in front of a camera and talk about it, I drew stuff. Yeah, I made some storyboard style things so that you could have some interesting visual stimulation besides my waving fingers during this video. So why don't we go through my basic bullet points for how I think the Sonic the Hedgehog sequel is gonna go. Okay, so first major revelation, Robotnik will figure out interdimensional travel. I mean, I guess this was pretty obvious, he's kind of trapped alone in the mushroom world, so the first thing we need to do is get our villain actually into a place where he can threaten somebody else. My guess is that he's going to use salvage components from his wrecked ship and the residual energy left in Sonic's quill to figure out how to open his own dimensional portal the same way that Sonic was able to do so with the rings. We can say that he gathered data about the rings as he flew through them in the first movie, so... You know, he has the information on what the rings were like as he passed through them, and he just has to duplicate that. But, instead of taking him back to his own world, he'll go to Sonic's world, because he'll have his portal keyed into an energy signature that's similar to Sonic's quill, and that energy is of course going to be more in Sonic's world than in Sonic himself. This will actually play into the next thing, Robotnik discovering that all of the life in Sonic's world has the same amount of, the same kind of energy that Sonic himself has, just in much lower quantities. This is a great way to tie Robotnik's motivations in with what he did in the video games. If every living thing in Sonic's world has the potential to be the same kind of energy battery that Sonic's quill was from the first movie, then that could explain why he wants to capture the animals to put them into his machines. Now, he can't get a lot of energy, like an animal would barely have enough power to keep one robot going, let's say that's the rule, and he can't make anything super big and powerful like his giant um, supersonic jet thing from the first movie, but it'll be a start. And, uh, and you can even play in to why Robotnik would want to start making animal-themed robots. It could either be part of his increasing psychosis, or he can come up with some uh, scientific justification, like since the animal is the energy source, giving it a body that's animal-shaped will help the energy source integrate into it more naturally. At, you know, at least if you want to put in some reasoning behind why Robotnik would suddenly start making animal-themed robots instead of just giant egg-shaped drones. The next point is why Tails came to Earth in the first place, and I believe this is going to be because of increasing aggression from the Echidna tribe. Yes, I believe in the 10 years since Sonic left, the Echidnas have actually been ramping up their military conquest, uh, perhaps with Knuckles as their champion. Knuckles is another special person like Sonic, except instead of manifesting super speed, he manifests super strength. Now, Knuckles is not the leader of this tribe. No, no, he's their champion. Um, in other words, he's kind of a useful idiot. He's super strong, and everybody says that he's so awesome and great, and he does great things for the tribe, and he's manipulated into leading them in, in huge conquests. As far, 
he's just a kid getting praise from his parental figure, so he thinks he's doing good when actually he's more, he's actually being used as a pawn of a harmful force. I mean, this tracks for Knuckles' character. I mean, he's always been fairly good-natured, but also naive, and because of that, he's been manipulated into doing some less than great things. He's not an idiot. I do not want this Knuckles to be an idiot. He is just naive and is being tricked by people who are, you know, he believes should be, you know, smarter than him, like parental authority figures. Okay, so with that established, we are going to get into the meat of the plot, the Hidden Palace Prophecy Wall. This is going to be super important for the storyline of the movie. Um, this is this is one of the few pieces of really deep lore we have from all the way back in the Genesis era. That in the Hidden Palace Zone, there was this big wall that shows a giant mustachioed figure battling something that looks like a hedgehog over a, over the Master Emerald. Of course, in the game's context, this is just kind of an Easter egg to the final stage when you collect all the Chaos Emeralds, but this can actually have lore. Imagine that this wall has been up for centuries or even millennia and the echidnas are trying to figure out what it means. Then this hedgehog with amazing abilities is born elsewhere on their island. So um, perhaps the reason they attacked in the first movie is because of this prophecy wall. They were either trying to recruit Sonic or eliminate him as a potential rival. And when the mustache guy shows up, they realize that he's another figure from this prophecy. And that leads into my next bullet point, which is, of course, Robotnik will ingratiate himself with the Echidna tribe. Um, this I'm kind of pulling a little bit into the lore of the Archie comic book. Uh, basically, um, in the comic book, Robotnik was an exile from the Overlander cities in the northern continent. Um, after he managed to escape, he was found half dead. By, um, by some of King Max's forces, and they brought him home. I believe it was actually Jules and Uncle Chuck themselves that dragged his carcass back, but I, I digress. Um, he became a military advisor to the Acorn Kingdom, and was able to lead them into victory in their war against the Overlanders. Then he betrayed them, and and um, took over for himself, establishing Robotropolis and blah blah blah. We all know that part of the story. Uh, so here, Dr. Robotnik can do something similar with the Echidna tribe. Um, the Echidnas have a whole bunch of manpower and know where the resources of the islands are. And he has the brilliance to exploit the resources, as we can see from my little Dr. Stone style thing here. Uh, he'll convince them that if they can gather the resources and help him build his machines, he'll be able to enhance their power so that they'll be able to take over and, you know, rule everything. And, um... And when Sonic comes back to try and thwart this, Robotnik will manipulate Knuckles into confronting him directly. Because, you know, he'll want to try and keep Sonic busy be while, while he's devising all of his science. Uh, so, yeah, of course, we're going to get a Sonic and Knuckles fight. I mean, do I, do I even really need to introduce that bullet point? Of course, one of the major action scenes, and probably most of the movie, is going to be the confrontation between Sonic and Knuckles before... Like, the, the idea that they should be allies probably won't even come up, because as far as Sonic is concerned, Knuckles is probably just some aggressor who's uh, who's leading the Echidna army to try and take over the world, and um, it won't be until the next part, the betrayal. Because, of course, Dr. Robotnik is going to betray the Echidna tribe. And, of course, this betrayal will happen in such a way that will leave Knuckles as the last of his kind. Um, now, we need to do this in a child-friendly way, of course, but thankfully we actually have several ways to do it, which are all tied in with the lore that's established in both the movie and other continuities. Um, Robotnik will set up a big old dimensional portal, which will forcibly suck all the echidnas into it. Like, he'll probably say, that when I push this button, your empire will be the greatest, most powerful thing ever. So everybody gather up to see it happen. And so everyone will gather into a single location, he'll push the button, and a portal will open. Uh, you could say that if he opens up a portal without specifying a destination, it'll leave them trapped between dimensions, or he's gonna send them to another empty world maybe he'll send him to the mushroom planet or perhaps we'll revive the zone of silence or the twilight zone which come from the uh 
Sonic Sad AM cartoon, and also um, Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. There's actually a lot of places where echidnas get banished to um, in the lore because, you know, Knuckles is a, Knuckles is very young, but he's supposed to be the last of his kind, so where do all the other echidnas go? This is how it happens in the movies. Uh, this is at least how I think it's going to happen. This will, of course, lead into the final climax, which will be a battle against the Death Egg robot. Seeing the betrayal firsthand, or possibly finding out after he brings Sonic back, uh, Knuckles will join forces with Sonic and Tails to do battle against the thing that the Echidna tribe had been building over the course of the movie, the Death Egg robot. A giant robot made in the image of Robotnik himself, because... You know, we, it, this is all leading into his vanity. Um, the power source is, of course, going to be the Master Emerald, like the big sacred rock that the Echidnas have been, that, that led the Echidnas to believe they had the right to conquer the world because they had such a powerful bubble. But ultimately, it will be defeated, and it should be a glorious action scene. It should, be, it should look like something out of Attack on Titan or Pacific Rim or something awesome like that. And this will, of course, lead us to the teaser for the next movie. Because, of course, I want Sonic the Hedgehog to be a trilogy. I mean, heck, if the if the Alvin and the Chipmunks movies can get four movies made, then this one should at least get a trilogy. And I would like to go on longer than that if it could. Um, so Robotnik, having escaped after his Death Egg robot's destroyed, will realize that he can't use a big, gigantic thing to confront such small and nimble opponents. He needs something to take them on in their own level. And this is when he would reveal either plans or a prototype model of Metal Sonic, getting us all super hyped for the next movie. And there we go. That's my basic speculation on what we're going to see in Sonic 2 the movie. Or would you call it Sonic the Movie 2? Or Sonic 2 movie? Like, oh boy, just like with Sonic the Hedgehog in 2006, we're going to have a weirdly disambiguated title, aren't we? What are we going to call it? Sonic 2 2021 or whenever this movie comes out? <laughs> oh, hmm. Well, I guess that's just something that uh, we'll have to worry about later. But yes, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, didn't you concentrate a lot on what Robotnik's going to do and not the other plot details? I figure, well, Robotnik... Jim Carrey is basically the huge celebrity star power of the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. And I really couldn't think of much to do with Tom the Cop and the denizens of... Earth, Green Hill, and um, <clears throat> in Sonic's world, like what, what what business would they have going into Sonic's world aside from, you know, maybe doing some behind the scenes helper little things. So like, I can only really see cameos and smaller bit parts for everybody except Jim Carrey's Robotnik. So that's why I mostly wrote this as a world as an adventure mostly contained in Sonic's world with Jim Carrey as the only real human presence within it. Which means that this movie could really just be Jim Carrey acting on a green screen a lot now that I think about it. <laughs> oh boy, that's uh that that would be quite this would be quite the interesting vehicle for Jim Carrey. But you know what? I don't care. I love Jim Carrey and Robotnik is really the only major human presence in the Sonic games, aside from the Sonic Adventure games and Sonic Unleashed. So, yeah, all for it. Let's do that. This is Wake Angel 2001, signing off.